what were some other realizations you had during COVID? Spirituality was a big thing um, in finding your life purpose, um, relationships that mattered, you know. Um, Family. Absolutely, absolutely. And the people that um, checked up on you. And I think along the way, I don't know about the audience, but I won't say lost a lot of friends, but a lot of friendships, it got sifted, right? That's the right word. So it sifted to more real people or more real conversations, um, which is why the farmer's market happened because I realized at that level, these people were relying on their life and to feed their children through this harvest. And so it became, okay, maybe we help you if you bring your, your, your goods to the farmer's market, we call on everyone and just dump it there, not dump, but like, you know, position it there and we'll just gather a few friends, tell them about it. And that's really how it grew organically. So the farmer's market was a collaboration with your close friends or? No, actually um, in this time, um, I was fortunate enough to have a conversation with R.D. Shalimar Tamano. Mm -hmm. And we discussed an exchange of how to help the community and how to make it sustainable. So we pitched the idea of, you know, nobody's wanting to go to the grocery. People are counting their pennies. Uh, we wanted to have an uh, alternative form of market that people would not need to hurt in the pocket. Because at this time, to go to the groceries, vegetables were so expensive because it was the law of so economy pricing and demand. pricing was very uh, reasonable and Yeah, it's really the price of 80 pesos per kilo for a mango. And, you know, and in, in a supermarket, it's 250. Because I understand by the time they get to that place, there were so many hands it had to exchange, right? And also the cost of retail costs. So that that's how it got born. And it started from 20 vendors to 40 vendors to 70 vendors. Did it generate uh, revenue Ab throughout the process? or Absolutely. We had up to 700 people who heard about, you know, 700 people that would come in one day and then we would ask each stall, how did you do today? And farmers would make 15, 20,000 and that would be enough to feed their families for an entire week, you know, or even more. So it was, we saw that we needed to help grassroots in order for letting the other parts of the ecosystem flourish. Because if people weren't eating, because at one point it was like, how do we... How do we go to get medicine? How do we do we grow our own food? I don't know if you ever encountered that doom gloom. How mm. long is this lockdown going to encounter, you yeah. know? And at one point, everyone is hoarding in grocery, right? Yeah, like that's true. shelves are getting empty. So like a dystopian film or abs <laughs> it's, a disaster It totally movie. felt like a utopian like yeah. <laughs> It's like we were in a movie and Absolutely. everyone was just and glamoury. everyone had to live their truth. Yeah, you there know? was so much uncertainty, so right. people were just on the edge right. all the time. <laughs> and to an extreme where everyone became so fearful of going out that even as the world started going back to normal, they had to adjust and had to go through post-trauma therapy. So we all witnessed everyone had to go through their own version and own it. So there was no right and wrong. It's just on our end, we navigated a forward system that maybe people would have criticized. Why are they creating that? They would gather people. But also we understood the, the heart of what we were doing it for, which is a recovery project. I um, think it was trying to find that balance between right, reopening right, and also right, staying safe. Right. Right? So it was... <laughs> you know, we got sharper um, in the two years because it would have been easier to just go and lock down and shut down and just yeah, be happy with the family. But that would have killed the economy. Exactly. So the wheels no... need to turn no matter how slow. So that was always <clears throat> our mantra moving forward. And we're so thankful to R.D. Charlie Martimano for giving us because there was always a disconnect between government and business owner at the time yeah. because government would have their own agenda. For the first time, I witnessed and really saw how government and business aligned where they say, I have this budget and could you help me understand where it could be used the most? And we really saw 
how the farmers really benefited, you know, and they were the ones that needed it in order also now produce so much more to give to restaurants. So it really goes up the food chain. Um, from then on, we also sh found out that a lot of our skilled artisans, like the chefs, and remember, the hospitality is such a, a huge chunk of an industry, right? Cruise ships, hotels, service, restaurants, and they were all going away because everyone had no jobs, so they needed to go to Dubai, to go to these cruise ships to work. So the next issues that we encountered was how do we keep talent here? And that's really what it was. How do Quality you keep? Of yes, people. because to learn examples, a pizza man, you can't learn making the correct pizza. You need a year of training to really get the full to ride. Get it right. Absolutely. The, the and these are skills that we need to keep in Cebu. Only because if you if you have to retrain again, it will take another time. Actually, that's what I noticed uh, during post lockdown. Uh, somehow I went around the different premium restaurants and the quality was wasn't quite the same Absolutely. even the five-star hotels Absolutely. the meat the the cooking it's such a everything. valid point and i witnessed that myself i think maybe in a gut cost i think so, so. but also um the chefs quality. got you know <clears throat> when you practice something you get better over time and remember there was this period of a gap so all these skilled chefs or skilled people forgot Right? And to be, yeah, rusty, um, that's really rusty. what happened. No um, you know, so we'd have an inner joke because I'm always surrounded by hotel GMs and we would just throw our problems out there. It would give us a good <clears> laugh. <throat> so we're like, guys, now we're serious. How do we do this? How do we move forward and reopen? And the answer was to really motivate these chefs to stay in house. So we created a food and wine festival. Can you believe that? In the middle of pandemic, uh, with a ghost signal of. Um, well, we started in Maktan because there was a liquor ban in Cebu. So it started there in Maktan and we were grateful for the mayors like Ahong and Cindy Chan were yes, very suppo yes. supportive <clears throat> to open um, during the time. So it, it was, was a success. It whole, was uh, um, festival. it was success in a way that the right people came to support the chefs. And through that, maybe two or three got jobs. Um, mm. You know, homemakers that would be in Facebook Marketplace, right? They would yes. sell online. And then some people actually had a, a thriving um, concept to make it to a real business because they were doing it at home, right? So the empanada business, mm -hmm. it was, what was that? The Ove Pandesal. Everyone remember that phase where it became the craze. Yes. Sushi baked roll, <laughs> right? Yes, so, I remember. <laughs> yeah. So all of this, though they were supported by the community through Facebook, we wanted to give them the next step which is hey would you like to test market as a real brand and hopefully hopefully it would lead them to opening their own brand so that's really what we're all about so that was the two years of the lockdown helping advocacies and helping humanity and community um, to rise because if you don't help them and you're only helping yourselves the whole middle man and the whole leveling yeah, I gets cut out and that's it's a circular economy moving forward it's no longer um i need to help myself so yeah i guess this was really a testament no, of the resilience of people that oh, they really gosh. find ways like you give this uh, chaotic situation but they find ways to uh, be resourceful and be uh, productive in helping our fellow uh, men and women in the community i think so i i want to teach my children a couple of skills and I thought to myself wow we're here sending our kids to university at the greatest schools hoping that would make them succeed mm -hmm. only to realize that they just need everyone just needs life skills um, we we didn't need an executive MBA yeah. right I think we produced a lot of new life skills from this whole I ordeal so. I think so and it sort of leveled us up in being able to thrive under difficult I hope it's circumstances. Enough. I hope it's enough to take our community or city or our country to the next level. But for sure, moving forward, everyone had a different life purpose mm -hmm. um, to know where they can better themselves and become a better version of themselves. Because it was very introspective. People that were reliant on one person from one week to the other would die. 
and I watched that with my own eyes and the real realization that life is so short. Yeah, it's uncertain. It's short. Uh, we don't know what will happen. Yeah. The best we can do is uh, make the most of what we have, the skills we know to I combat think, all I this I think that's uh, the realistic word. Challenges. That's the realistic word moving forward. It's not for personal gain <clears throat> moving forward. It's about helping the community grow together. And it's not an isolated place to um, be competitive because in the, you know, in the competition of a normal world, it would be one up the other, yeah. right? That no longer exists, or I feel that no longer exists because I have only witnessed kindness. I have only witnessed circular economy. I have only witnessed think tanks to better problem solving. Yeah, well, given the different industries, it can be really cutthroat or Absolutely. competitive, but somehow we see, the, as you say, the kindness and, and, and nothing the can solidarity. be done alone. It starts with an idea. Um, I also the people around me. We didn't know what we were doing, but we had skill sets to take it to. How can we improve, or how can we mount it that um, one area doesn't need to die or mm -hmm. not move? Right. Right. So we had to redefine that for ourselves. Um, but ultimately, we're quite proud, and the people that stayed with us in the brands are happy we help them in their homes we help them in destructive relationships you know you you become the human resource slash um overall right you you have to be well rounded <laughs> everything i didn't realize the you know um <clears throat> the people that we carry and you realize um for all also our the future of our children and you you know you're just newly married <laughs> Just uh, a year. Yeah. We didn't even have a big lavish yeah. uh, reception. Was, or a honeymoon. Did you have very, a honeymoon? Uh, just domestic, just yeah. within the Philippines. Even me, I haven't traveled internationally <laughs> yet.